How, how did it feel to get back in the wind column? Oh my God, it felt great. All week long, I've been saying I wanted to wipe that is Aaron Pico off of me from my last fight, and I feel like I did that tonight. Yeah, and I guess uh, talk to me about the, the mental side of that, right? You, you had a kind, of a kind of a heated fight with Aaron. It was a big profile, and to have it go down that way, was it, was it tough to, to kind of get that image out of your mind and shake that a little bit? No, nah, it wasn't that tough, but he, it, it really pissed me off how he made it sound like I was in here mad-dogging him and trash-talking him all week long when all I did was look at the man and stare him down like you're supposed to before a fight anyways. But it is what it is. That's in the past. That's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about tonight's fight and how great I looked in it. Yeah, so talk to me about it. Uh, rate your performance. How do you think you did? Um, I got to watch it again. I give myself maybe a 7 or 8 out of 10. I felt like I looked sloppy at some moments. But the man, I swear to you, he is a truck. Everything I hit him with hurts right now. It hurts me to hit him. And everything he hit me with, I'm a little sore from that too. When you went to the judges' scorecards and you heard it was going to be a split, were you pretty confident that it was going to go your way? Not at all. Um, I, knew, I knew it was very close. I knew he didn't do anything on the ground. I knew I touched him up a lot, but he also touched me up. So it was a very close fight. It went either way. And after the fight, your call out of Aaron, uh, Adam Borix. Talk to me about that. Why is he the guy that you want next? Well, when I first got the call to come to Bellator, I was ecstatic because it was his name. I said yes right away, same day. It took a few days, and then they ended up giving the fight to somebody else. You know, I, was a little, I wasn't too sour about it, but it was like an opportunity just slipped out of my fingers because I know I could fight the man. And uh, I've been wanting to fight him ever since, man. There's no disrespect. I just want to beat his brains in. Hey, John, uh, one quick question for me was, you know, previously in the last fight, you said your cards were basically, you know, caught. He saw your cards, and he called you out. So coming into this fight, what changes did you make, you know, in your codes and the way you were, uh, the coaches were instructing you? First of all, that 1-4 stuff he was talking about uh, as a boxer, he trains to, go to throw the overhand right over, over my uppercut. My coach had called an uppercut. I'm supposed to move to my head to the right where his right would have whiz, whizzed by my head, and I was supposed to throw the four. I threw a knee and dropped my left hand. It had nothing to, and it had nothing to do with what he heard from my coaches. So he was just feeling himself, but fuck him. It's all that. That's in the past. Um... I didn't, I, we, we switched up a few things, but we knew that Macapa was going to come with the pressure and come with the loopy punches. So we just made sure that we came straight forward with my punches and kicks. All right, we'll take one or two more here. Jeff? Jeff Brantley from the Man in the Cage podcast. John, you looked great all night, but in the round two there, you seemed to really find your timing. Was there something that he was doing that was a tell or just you knew, you know, once you downloaded everything, you were going to be able to time all those shots on him? It was more of a me uh, getting the information in the first round and then letting loose in the second and third. I'm sick and tired of being that guy. I've been, like that. I've been that guy my whole career. I'm trying to get started a little faster these days, but I do thrive once I've downloaded your information and then I can pick you apart in the later rounds.